okay, uh, vocabulary lesson two consists of two pieces. And you can write these down. They are macro and micro. Macro and micro. James, are macro and micro prefixes, roots, or suffixes? Prefixes, you are correct. James, can you tell me how, did, did you guess that? Or did you see the clue that's on the board that helps you understand that they're prefixes? How do you know that? <laughs> oh, probably because you knew a word that starts with macro or micro. Is that right? OK, so we'll get to your word in just a moment. Um, Brandon, how do you know that just from looking? Thank you. So James already had familiarity with the word or the prefix micro. He knows some words that start with micro. So that's how he figured out it was a prefix. But if you had no clue, you'd never seen this before, then you could tell it was a prefix because of the punctuation. Remember that that dash indicates that it's a prefix. That's part of dictionary reading skills because when you're looking in the dictionary, remember that they use a little piece of punctuation like that for a lot of meaning. So if you see micro, dash in the dictionary, that's the definition of a prefix. So these are both prefixes. Um, James, you've already volunteered and I've, I've got your word. I heard it. Can anybody else give me a word using one of these, macro or micro? Brandon, you've already volunteered. Come on. Yes. Microwave. Microwave. All right, microwave seems to work. Tyler, where's the split? Does this word seem to have a suffix? I would agree with you. It's just prefix and root. So we have a prefix, and we have a root. And in the suffix position, so far, we have a nothing. All right, let's continue to do the work. Um, Tyler's done a good job so far. Can somebody tell me whether or not, or what part of speech microwave is? Kayla. It can be a noun in the sense of like a microwave oven, right? So put it in the microwave. Is that, that what you're thinking of, that kind of? Yes, in that case, it would be a noun. Is it another part of speech also? Because it wasn't originally a noun. James? Verb. So you would microwave something. You would subject it to microwave radiation in order to heat it, right? That's what microwaving is. Okay. Let's work with that. Kayla, you're correct. And when you look it up in the dictionary, you will see microwave listed as a noun. You'll also see it listed as a verb. We're going to play with the verb for a moment, and I'll show you why. If microwave is a verb, what suffix can you add to it to change it, to transform it into a different part of speech? Okay, ing. What part of speech has it just become? If it's no longer a verb, if we've added an ing. Oh, Brandon? Uh, could be an adjective. Did you have a guess, Katie? Adjective. adjective. Everybody, grab your vocab skills packet, the, the one like Zach's got on his table. Go to the very back, the, the last section. Take a look at that, uh, um, that section that says fact. Here's a fact for you. If you take a verb, uh, let's see, I'll use the verb rip. I'm going to take a paper, 
right? Got paper, and then I have. How would you describe this paper, Tyler? It is ripped paper, right? So you took the verb ripped, and then what did you do to it, Tyler? Okay, you add the ed, and for this spelling, you need an extra p, so you added that suffix. What part of speech is that word ripped? How do you know that, Tyler? Very good. So Tyler's correct. That becomes an adjective. If you take a verb and you add ed, or sometimes ing, you can make it an adjective. The falling water. The word falling is an adjective modifying water. Gabe, let's uh, move away from the ing. Um, what suffix would you use to make this verb an adjective? I'm going to describe my lunch that has just been put in the microwave and I've turned it on. And after I take it out, how do I describe it? Correct. Because now I have my microwaved lunch. And microwave the verb becomes microwaved the adjective. You'll get a sense of it. You'll get the hang of it. Pay attention to facts like the fact that I just listed in that vocab skills handout. And the more words you see, the more familiar you'll become because there are patterns. I have some information here that you will be able to read at your leisure. Definitions. Macro is a prefix that means big, very big. Micro is a prefix that means very small. So obviously the radiation on a microwave is radiation with a very short wavelength. That's why it's called a microwave. Got some words up there, macrocosm, microcosm, antonyms of each other. Probably unfamiliar to you, but they will become familiar as you uh, move on in school. I remember mastering these words in high school. Hopefully all of you right now are thinking of some words other than microwave that you know already. Don't volunteer them. Because remember, that's what part of this uh, activity is about. It's you finding those new words, playing around with them, transforming them. What we just did with microwave, analyzing it, taking it apart, understanding it's part of speech, and then transforming it into a different part of speech is the content of your activity today. So I'm going to pause there. Are there any questions about this material?